Hello, my name is Dennis and welcome to my first video on YouTube about installing the United Manufacturing Hub on a flat car Linux VM on your local computer. I'm not sure yet if this will be part of a series or if I will do more videos, but let's just jump in with the installation itself. So our objective is to basically get the United Manufacturing Hub running on our local computer, but instead of doing the deployment of Kubernetes directly on our laptop or desktop, we will basically download and run a pre-configured Flatcar Linux virtual image, um, virtual machine image to basically contain all of the software neatly separated from our host system, right? So for this, the UMH provides a virtual machine image that we can download. Um, it's here, yeah, it's this IPXE boot image. So just go ahead and click on that here. It has been downloaded to my downloads folder, as we can see here. The next step what we will do is we will open VirtualBox is a software for running and configuring virtual machines. And we will use this ISO image to create a new virtual machine. So as you can see, I have uh, two VMs on my system, a Windows PC and a Ubuntu PC. Here I should also mention that my host system is Arch Linux. So I'm using a Linux distribution, but it doesn't matter whether you use Windows or even Mac OS. So let's go ahead and create a new virtual machine with the settings as specified here in the article. I will give it the name Flatcar because that's the name of the Linux distribution. The folder in which this VM will be created uh, or the directory, I should say, stored on your system is in my case always VirtualBox slash VM under my current user's home directory. And as the ISO image, we will select the image that we just downloaded from the URL, which will be in my downloads directory, and it's called this ipxe.iso. All right. Um, the type will be a Linux distribution. However, because Flatcar is not so mega popular, it will not be listed among the options in VirtualBox, which is why we specify that it's going to be a other Linux distribution. Um, according to the guide, we should give the machine about 8 gigs of RAM and we will give it 4 CPU cores that it can use. The disk size should be 32 gigabytes. So let's increase the amount to 32 gigabytes. And we will create this hard disk now along with the virtual machine. By next, we see an overview, base memory, 8 gigs of RAM, for processor cores, we don't disable uh, enable EFI because we don't need it for this um, operating system. And we have a disk size of 32 gigabytes. This looks good, so let's go ahead and finish the installation. There's one more thing we have to configure. We want easy access from our host system to the virtual machine. This way we don't always have to use the graphical interface of VirtualBox. We can just start the machine and then connect to this virtual machine using, for example, a terminal on my host computer here. Now, in order for this to work, we have to configure the network between the virtual machine, the flat car machine, and my own Linux distribution. For that, we have to go to the settings, go to the network, and as specified in the article, the adapter one, should be a bridged adapter connected to my Ethernet um, inter network interface, which is called Eno1 on my computer. It will be named differently on your computer. Right. Now we can go ahead and start the machine. And this will prompt the installation of everything in this image. So both the Flatcar, as well as all the Kubernetes um, services necessary for the United Manufacturing Hub. Um, 
we are going to accept the license, of course, with the default case. And here the article mentions that we should use a static IP. However, I haven't had any luck configuring a static IP. For demonstration purposes, we will just use DHCP, which means that our virtual machine will get a new IP address assigned by our host using the DHCP. Um, so we just have to pay attention to what the final IP address is. Let's go ahead and select the default option. Um, it will start the installation. And after a while, it will prompt us for what kind of disk we want. We want to install it to the SDA disk, which is the default option. Here we get a short overview of our architecture and our system. If this looks good, so we can click on confirm. The installation itself takes a couple of minutes. So I just have a want to take this time to restate what we are doing. We are in fact, if you look at it as layers of an onion, the smallest layer will be the United Manufacturing Hub. So all the different services like Grafana, um, MQTT, Node-RED, and so on, they will be running as Docker containers managed by Kubernetes. So it's in fact a Kubernetes deployment running on a Kubernetes cluster. Um, this all has been pre-configured in the Flatcar VM image. So there's nothing we have to do in Kubernetes itself. It has all been done for us. Now, this Kubernetes installation runs inside a virtual machine, which is actually the next layer of um, abstraction. It's an actual computer from which we have virtualized the hardware. So this Linux VM thinks it's a real computer, even though it's just running as a virtual computer on my actual host system, which is Linux distribution. Here we see that the, um, yeah, that, the installation, that the installation worked. We see that we have obtained an IP address from the HCP. In this case, it's 192.168.178.173. So what we can do is instead of logging in as the core user here, well, we are already logged in, I will try to log into the machine from my host. From this, I open my terminal here and I type SSH. I'm going to connect as the core user and then type in the IP address, which is 173. Ah, the machine is uh, rebooting. And one issue we see is that when we reboot, we are actually already again in the installation screen. To prevent that, we want to actually remove the installation medium from the machine's optical drive. To do that, we go to the Flatcar VM in VirtualBox, click the settings. Um, let's, as a quick check, see if the net network is still fine. Yes, it's still bridged adapter on Eno1. But then if we now go to storage, we see that we have the ISO image is still mounted inside the optical drive. So let's go ahead and remove this image from the virtual drive. And this will cause that the next time we start this VM, it will not try to reinstall um, the system. It will just boot as the core user. There we go. It's booting flat core default. And at the end of that um, boot, once it's ready, we will see what the IP address of this machine is. And note that after every boot, this IP address, unfortunately, on my system will change. Right, okay, so we see that the machine is booted. Here we see the IP address, so it ends on dot .175. So now let's try to SSH into the machine as the core user. And IP address as written here, so 192, 186, uh, 68, and 178. Dot 175. So that's it. Running that. And indeed, we see that it's authentic. Um, it's, we can make a connection to SSA. We say that we trust that um, remote host. The password is, as a guide says, is UMH, as you can see here. So the user is core, the password is UMH press enter and we are inside. So we are now connected to the virtual machine. This we can actually minimize, we don't need any more. 
we can now control our virtual machine, Flatcar virtual machine, from a terminal running on our host. So if I would say, for example, who am I? It says under core user, and I'm currently in my user's home directory. Let's see if we can run some commands. For example, this command will show us the config of um, our Kubernetes cluster. And here we see the output. If I make the screen a little bit bigger, it's more convenient to see. Um, this basically gives us the information about our Kubernetes cluster. And this information we will use to interact with the cluster. Now, we could of course interact with the cluster using the kube control commands, but the guide uh, proposes that it's actually much more convenient to use a program specifically made for this. And this program is either called the Unite Manufacturing Lens, the UMH Lens, or I prefer the more open source, the more open version, um, it's called Open Lens, which is basically an IDE to interact with your Kubernetes uh, clusters. This is what it looks like. Um, it's called Open Lens. Let me make it a bit bigger. Um, before we can do anything in our cluster, we first have to give OpenLens information about our cluster. And this is exactly the output we have from this command. So if I would say copy this information from API version all the way down, we can then say that we open a new file, uh, we add a cluster, and it will prompt us for the information of this cluster. Now, very important, we ran this command inside the virtual machine, right? So it for this, from the perspective of the virtual machine, the cluster runs on localhost because it's basically the machine it runs in. However, we know that we are in fact using a virtual machine that runs on our host, which means that we have to change the IP address of the server because our open lens program runs on a host computer, whereas Kubernetes runs in a virtual machine with a particular IP address. This means that we have to use the IP address of that virtual machine, right? And not the one from um, localhost. So let, let's go here up and copy the IP address of the virtual machine like that and we will adapt this IP address and replace it with the IP of our virtual machine. We can also change its name and, and so on but I prefer to do that in OpenLens itself. Let's add the cluster. Okay, it seems that the cluster has been found. We can pin it for easy access and by opening it we will now try to connect and we managed. So we now connected to our Kubernetes cluster running inside Flatcar Linux on our host OS. Um, here we can, for example, say, let's check at the settings. And I like to give the cluster a more clear name such as United Manufacturing Hub or UMA. Click enter. So this is our cluster. We can now inspect various components of our clusters. Let's first of all look at the um, network and the various services. Here we see that we, it seems we only have one service Kubernetes, but that's not true because we are now filtering on the default namespace. The Kubernetes, the Kubernetes namespace you actually want to look at is called the United Manufacturing Hub. Now opening this namespace, we see that we have all the services we expect from our United Manufacturing Hub deployment on Kubernetes. For instance, 8080 is most often used for um, web apps. In this case, Grafana is accessible on this port. Right, so as a recap, what we have done, we have downloaded the virtual machine ISO image from the United Manufacturing Hub website. From this ISO image, we have created a virtual machine in VirtualBox called Flatcar. We have run this machine, configured its networking so that the adapter is a bridge. This means that we can connect to the virtual machine using SSH is what we have done here. Um, 
Next, we have launched the virtual machine, done the installation, connected through SSH. We can type commands, we can write the information of our cluster. And then this cube um, config, we have copied it into our second program, which is called um, OpenLens. We added a new cluster there, and then we connected to this cluster to be able to browse our Kubernetes services. I think that's all for this video. In the next video, we will take a closer look at the various services and how to configure them.